Hi everybody, this is Dr. Satish Babu. Welcome back to Whom Channel, where world health opinions matter. I'm back with another episode where I talk about mucormycosis or black fungus. This is a condition that has caused anxiety amongst the public all over India during the second wave of COVID-19. Black fungus is a rare but a dangerous invasive fungal infection caused by a class of spores called mucormycetes. These fungi are naturally present in our environment, most commonly in the soil, uh, the rotten fruits and vegetables. While fungal diseases are common in the plants, they are rare in healthy human beings. Some fungi are present harmlessly in the human bodies. However, when the immune system is breached due to other major illnesses, the fungi, which are otherwise harmless, take advantage and invade the human tissues. Now, the question that will be asked is, what causes lowered immunity? If patients have had a transplant, uh, they have been on anti-cancer treatment after a diagnosis of malignancy, long-term steroids uh, therapy, uh, uncontrolled diabetes, major illnesses like COVID-19, these kind of patients are prone for mucormycetes or the black fungus. When these fungi are inhaled, they attack the sinuses, then spread to the lungs, the eyes, the brain, and the central nervous system. Well, depending on the spread, there's said to be a local disease where they involve only the skin and the paranasal sinus, and they are called the invasive disease when they involve the eyes and the brain. And then they are called the disseminated disease when they involve lungs and other major organs, mainly through, through the blood spread. Usually the patients have one-sided or both-sided facial pain, discoloration of the skin around the nose, swelling of the eyelids and around the eyeballs, severe pain and some sort of discharge from the nose. At this stage, if they are diagnosed and treated, the chances of improvement are pretty high and the loss of life is less. If the involvement progresses to eyes, brain and skull, the risk to life is pretty high. And the chances of survival also get less if the lungs are involved. It is important to seek early medical advice to prevent loss of life and deformity. Well, the diagnosis is generally based on a detailed clinical examination, a CT scan and uh, MRI scans, and a couple of laboratory tests. If the infection is confined to nose and the paranasal sinuses, the ENT surgeon would probably advise you for a surgical procedure to excise the infected tissues in and around the nose. However, if the infection involves the skull and brain, a neurosurgeon's opinion is needed at the earliest. The aim of the treatment is to debride the infected tissue to reduce the fungal load and treat with antifungal medications. If there is a delay in diagnosis, debridement of the tissue and medication, many patients lose their lives. Post-surgery, the antifungal drugs may be advised by your doctor either as a single drug regimen or a multi-drug regimen depending upon the severity of the disease. These drugs need to be given intravenously initially, so obviously you have to be hospitalized. And later on, uh, depending upon the improvement, they can be stepped down to oral medication, which needs to be taken for several weeks. Unfortunately, these medications are pretty expensive. In spite of the treatment, the mortality or the death rate is high, as much as 25 to 60 percent in the nose, eye, brain mucormycosis, what we call as the rhino orbito cerebral mucormycosis, and it goes up to 80 to 90 percent in patients with the lung involvement. The best prognosis is for the ones with skin and the sinus involvement and which are diagnosed early. As you all know, prevention is always better than the cure as in any other disease. Controlling sugars in diabetics, avoiding self-medications with steroids for long durations, 
avoiding contact with the environment or surroundings uh, with fungal elements like manure, the rotten vegetables and the fruits. Also, frequent servicing of the air conditioned filters in your office or at home, drinking well filtered and pure water and good hygiene, good nutrition and masking up most of the time are also helpful. Well, that's all for this episode and I'll be back soon and with another episode. Until then, I want you to stay safe. Watch, like, subscribe and share this video. Thank you very much and I'll be back soon.